Hello everybody, it's Joe. Welcome back to the workbench. Today we are playing with 3D printed dice. <laughs> so today I am fixing up a game that I bought at the second hand store for my kids. Clue Jr. Found it there for you know, a buck or two and took it home. Of course, it's going to be missing parts from the second hand store. So let's crack it open and see what it's got. Uh, fortunately, it does have the board, which is good because that's a hard thing to find. It also has a Jenga brick in it, which I don't think it needs. It's got uh, it's got lots of papers, uh, not all of which have been written on. I was able to laminate four of them, so we if we use a marker, we're never going to need to have another one of those. So that's good. And then it has these little pieces here that have some of them have uh, a pet on them, some of them have a toy on them. You take these little standees and put them in there and you play with them and then you have to look at the bottom to see what they are and some of them have uh, furniture in them and then you take two of them and hide them but uh, it doesn't have the rules that's kind of an important part fortunately the rules were not difficult to find and uh, recreate because you know 2d printers are pretty ubiquitous these days and so reading through the rules to see what I'm missing I found out that I'm missing two things fortunately I've got all of the clues so that's good but I am missing kind of a clubhouse that you take two of these and put in there so that you know what so you have something to hunt for not not really a big deal we'll just say put those off to the side or something like that and that'll cover that but I am also missing a dice and it's not just any dice it's a custom dice that has two of the sides have our star and a magnifying glass and the other ones have numbers on them and I looked up online the numbers are one I'm uh, sorry two three three and four and then these two custom symbols on there well I can't just buy a normal dice for that I'm gonna have to make it myself so we're gonna make a 3d printed dice to replace it now some people question whether 3d printed dice are fair and the answer is of course it's not fair it's it's hollow and it's got all sorts of reasons for the weight to be wrong but they're not that unfair actually I found out that the tried out a couple of them and the less that's on the middle of them, the more hollow the dice is, the, the lower the infill, the more fair it was. And the other thing is a lot of dice want to have these nice rounded edges to them. You see, they want to be almost spherical. But the problem with that is if the dice does have a bias, then it's going to want to roll. This is going to allow that dice bias, dice, that's what I'm going to call it from now on, a dice. No, uh, it's going to allow that bias to manifest even more, whereas if you use one that has nice sharp corners, it stops more abruptly, and therefore its bias has less of a chance to manifest itself. So that's, uh, that's kind of the trick to making a 3D printed dice. Low infill, nice sharp corners, not these rounded corners that we got here. So let's go to Blender and make ourselves a dice. So to begin with in Blender, Let's add, oh, what shape or dice? A cube. Let's go into edit mode, move it up one so that it's uh, above there. And then let's scale it up by 10. So if you take a look at the dimensions, it's a 20 by 20 by 20 dice. Nice and chunky, you know? Now, I know I said that it needs to have sharp corners, but come on, that's just not appealing. So let's add a bevel to here. Let's apply that scale so that our bevel is has some bearing on reality. Um, about a one millimeter bevel is probably about as much as you want to push it. And that makes it so it's not so rough on the hands. Maybe 0.5, maybe 0.5, no, somewhere between there. Now let's make the sides for it. Well, since four of the sides have a number, I'm just going to use a text object. There's my text object. Let's center that. Uh, and let's make it nice and big so let's size that up to 20 go in there and two that one says two let's rotate it 90 degrees along the x stand it up move it along the y 10 so that it's against the edge and let's move it up to uh let's see i don't i think i want this bigger so let's crank it up 25 this is a little bit too big I, it's got like two millimeters at the bottom so I want it to have about two millimeters at the top so let's adjust the size a little bit 22 23 23 
looks like about right. Now with this on the edge over here, and let's add a solidify modifier to that and solidify it two millimeters with an offset of zero so that it goes both directions. We kind of, whenever you're doing Boolean, you want it to be a little bit outside and a little bit inside of the object that you're doing. It just makes it easier. Actually, I'm debating. I think maybe I want to go one and a half millimeters. The deeper you make this, especially on the bottom and the top layers, the easier it's going to be to see. So you really kind of want to push the depth of that. But keeping in mind that once we Boolean this out, that's going to be overhang that you have to deal with. And maybe you're going to have to be a little bit clever about that overhang. But I think this will be just fine. Now here's, here's where a little bit of cleverness comes in. Change the pivot point to the 3D cursor. Make sure the 3D cursor is in the middle. Then when we duplicate, rotate around the Z 90 degrees, it just goes to the other side. It just rotates around there. Isn't that neat? So let's go into here, and this one's 3. Duplicate, rotate 90 degrees around the Z. And this one is going to be, actually, this one's going to be 3 as well. What was I doing? Duplicate, oops. <laughs> Duplicate, rotate Z 90 and you are going to be four. And that four is mighty messed up. I wonder why. Let's let's try doing this with the extrude instead of the the uh, the extrude setting instead of the solidify mul multiplier. So uh, with the extrude though, you have to do it how much you want it, which is 1.5, and it then does that in both directions. The, the extrude setting is just a mess. Plus, I told you in the other video that I was doing about doing the cool little name tags that it does some strange things with the geometry. You just don't want to use that setting if you can get away with it. But in this case, it seems to fix the four. I don't know what was wrong with the four, but there we go. So there's the ones around the outside edge. Let's do the bottom and the top. Now, I could do uh, like take an image and import it into Inkscape and then turn it into an SVG and then bring it into Blender and extrude it out. But it's a star and a magnifying glass. I can make those with basic objects simple enough. So let's start with the star. And actually we need to think about this for a little bit. Do we want the star on the top or the bottom as it prints? Well, if we put it, you know, if we put it on the bottom, then it's going to be this big open space that it has to do a huge bridge across. And we kind of don't want to do that, but the magnifying glass is all these kind of thin lines. So we can do that one on the bottom and the bridging on it will work just fine. So star on the top, magnifying glass on the bottom. Let's do the star first. Here's how I'm going to do the star. I'm going to add a cylinder, but I'm going to reduce its vertices to five. See how clever that is? That's halfway to a star already. Let's move it up 20. Let's scale it. Uh, well, let's scale it by 0.5 in, ooh, boy, it doesn't want to work with me on that one because I am currently going around the pivot point of the 3D cursor. Let's make our pivot point the medium point the way it's supposed to be. Now, if we scale it by 0.5 in the Z and then scale it in three, uh, well, actually we could just, whatever, three is fine. Uh, it's going, it's biting into it just as much as the other ones are. That's what we want right there. But this is not the shape that we want. We want it to be a square or a, a star. So I'll just give it a little rotate there, scale it up just a little bit in all but the Z, and then extrude these out five, extrude this out five, extrude this out five, and this out five. Now that I've done that, what I can do is I can select all of these edges around, or all of these faces on the side, and because they're not connected, I can change my pivot point again to individual origins, and when I scale them in all but the Z, notice they each scale independently together, which makes a nice star shape. So there we go, star shape done, no problem. Let's add a cylinder. And I'm going to go, we want to up the vertices on this one back up to 32. Let's go into local view. Uh, I didn't want to do local view just yet. Let's scale it by 0.5, scale it in the Z by 3. And let's get out of local view. I need to see where this one goes. Because I'm going to want it to be like that. Okay, back to local view. 
So, how am I going to turn this into a magnifying glass? Lots of ways. We're going to do it the simple way. Thank you, neighbor, for revving your engine. It's so polite of you. All right. I'm going to delete the top and bottom faces. Then I'm going to, first of all, apply the scale modifier so that when I do the solidify modifier, my thickness means something. One millimeter thick. Yeah, two millimeters? Too much. Two is too much. 1.5? 1.5 is nice and chunky. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be a negative space. This is going to be bridged over. And some 3D printers, if you make that negative space too thin, if you make the wall too thin, it'll touch and it just won't turn out at all. But generally speaking, you don't have the same constraints with negative space that you do with wall thickness. So one millimeter might actually work for this one. I think I'm going to go with one millimeter on it. I'm going to go into edit mode. Oops, let's apply this modifier first. Now I'm going to go into edit mode. Grab these vertices on the edge. I think that that's, those are the right ones. Extrude those out. Let's get out of local mode so that I can see this whole thing. Scale in all the disease. You know, that's probably okay, but I'm going to move it over here. Scale it up. Do I want to push it that big? Yeah, go big or go home. However, I think that this is a little bit too big. Let's find out. Uh, let's select the cube, select everything but that, and go into local view here. And I just want to see, is my star touching too close to the edges on there? Is my magnifying glass touching too close? Because that's going to be that's going to be geometry that we're going to have to resolve later. But I think that's okay. So here's what we're going to do. With all of these guys selected, we're going to duplicate them. We're going to select one of them and convert them to a mesh. And then we're going to join them all together. So now they are one mesh all together. So let's grab that one mesh and just look at it. That's one mesh all together. That way, when we uh, add a Boolean modifier and difference out that one mesh, Hopefully I got the right one. There we go. In one Boolean modifier, we have all the sides, almost all the sides of our dice ready to go. What happened to the number four here? Four, what happened to you? Are you running into problems because your geometry is funky? Let me see, yep. This is what I was talking about with the extrude multiplier. You can see on these edges that you've selected here that there are other edges that aren't selected. So what we have to do is just select everything remove the doubles 30 vertices disappeared let's go back out and undo and redo that boolean modifier and see if it catches to number four see that extrude modifier or that extrude setting if you use it on the text causes trouble but fortunately i was able to get around that pretty good and now we've got our dice so there it is magnifying glass on the bottom star on the top and here it is all printed out and ready to go. So what I did is I printed this in PLA and then I used ABS slurry in the recesses so that I could use a little bit of acetone and smooth that right down so it's easy to see. You could also use nail polish. I would recommend thinning the nail polish down so it goes down in there nice and easy. But then you can still use acetone or nail polish remover. The PLA won't rub away with the acetone but the uh, nail polish or ABS slurry will. And there's the custom dice and so we can put that in the box and my kids are ready to play clue jr so thank you so much for being here i hope that you've learned something i hope that this has inspired you to make something cool if you've got something you'd like to see 3d modeled and 3d printed please leave a comment into the or leave a comment below simon has been on this video the whole time to remind you to like subscribe share and enjoy and thank you so much for watching i'm joe and as usual I am terrible at ending.